peace and love. This is Phil Fax here. Snobby Sports. It's the sports snob. And I'm in the building. Today I want to have a talk with y'all. About Carmelo Anthony. And I want to talk about. What transpired here in New York with him. And. The outcome. Today. When we look at the results. Looking back. So, there's a few things that happened today that um, really inspired me to make this video. I was already thinking about making it, and I don't have all the fancy footage, you know. My videos are going to be raw, regular, because this is a hobby for me. If you don't subscribe, if you don't like, I understand. But um, this is something I needed to get off my chest anyway. Uh, Carmelo? This blunt's for you, fam. I call this video Carmelo's Revenge. His revenge on insanity and Mike D'Antoni and all the haters. He gets the last laugh. Carmelo Anthony, I know we all know about his career. We all know what he meant to basketball before he even got to the Knicks. What he did in college. What he did on the Nuggets. We heard afterward. Because we were very ungrateful. When the Knicks. Not Carmelo. Decided to give up so much. To get him. They were impatient. And they wanted to get him right away. Carmelo never forced his way here. The Knicks forced. The situation to. Be sped up. So Carmelo could be here as soon as possible. And that wasn't his fault, and the fans took that out on him. The fans were so ungrateful when we got Carmelo, I couldn't believe it. I just uh, was working at the Garden the two seasons prior to us getting him. I actually lost my job at the Garden right before we got him. And I was crushed. Um, I, was, I moved to Georgia. I was living in Atlanta. So, <laughs> believe it or not, I was actually working in Phillips Arena as a cook for the Atlanta Hawks when we got Carmelo, when we first got him, word. So I was very happy to receive, you know, to get him, to have him on our team. But I was so shocked when I heard all of the rebuttal that people were, were, were coming up with about us giving up so much to get him. And there's two ways to look at it, like I said, because... The first way is he never forced anything, so I don't understand why anyone is holding him responsible. If anything, we should be grateful that we have one of the premier players in the league at the moment wanting to be a part of our team. And he was willing to do whatever it took to make it easier for us to get him and for him to land here. That's number one, ungrateful people. Ungrateful people. Mm -mm -mm. Got to watch the language trying to work on that then there's another way to look at it too where what did we really give up in reality to get him y'all keep talking about we gave up the future and this and that the last time I checked as much as I like Wilson Chandler because I really like Wilson Chandler when we drafted him it would have been nice if we could have kept some of those pieces I agree but we didn't give up anything that was of equal value or greater to get Carmelo. So how dare anyone, anyone seem to try to uh, uh, apply, imply that we gave up too much to get him. Gallinari ain't no fucking, did it again, see? Wilson Chandler, Gallinari, and all of the players that we gave up, they're not champions. They're not better than Carmelo. In, in no capacity whatsoever. What we got from Carmelo when he was here, we would have never gotten from any of those players. And the way we have been screwing up draft picks, young players, and all type of miscoaching that was going on, even when Carmelo got here, which gets to which leads to Mike D'Antoni, that didn't guarantee that the Knicks would have been better off in any way than what happened with Carmelo, what, re, what reality happened. I don't understand why people try to create this situation or create a narrative where Carmelo's this bad guy. 
that forced his way to New York and didn't give us anything. Y'all are fake Nick fans. And y'all need to stop getting in our conversations and stop coming to our arena and stop getting involved in our business if you're going to come with that poisonous mentality and come in here with that same bull crap that the media does already. There's a lot of reasons that a lot of things happen that the fans are aware of a lot of times. It's cool when we have this platform, YouTube, where people that do have some information can share it. Now, this is to the point where sometimes people get selective. You hear what you want to hear. You know what you want to know, too. But I just had to make this video because there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to look at this Carmelo situation, and I will continue. So the players that we gave up, let's look at Wilson Chandler. What did he turn out to be? Not much. Let's look at Gallinari. Gallinari is now, and I'm going to tell you something. I love Gallinari. He's born on the same day as me. We have the same birthday. No problems with Gallinari whatsoever. I understand how his makeup, all that. Official player, still not better than Carmelo Anthony. What we gave up to have the moments that we have, those guys probably would have, we would have never seen that kind of success. Our franchise's um, leadership, the management was still in disarray, still unorganized, still no good, still not making any decisions. We had no development for our youth. Like I said, look at all the young guys, Tony Douglas, Landry Fields, uh, Iman Shumper. I could go on with all the people, all the draft picks, um, Channing Fry, all the draft picks that we've had over the years before we even got to Porzingis that the Knicks have screwed up. So when we got Carmelo Anthony, I don't understand what was the problem. It actually did give us a new beginning. But I'm going to tell you what was the problem. The coach, Mike D'Antoni. Right. Because this man is in love with his system. A system that is not going to win a championship in the NBA until the NBA finishes changing the rules the way it has been for the last few years to Europeanize the basketball game so that way European players who are not as athletic and as strong as American players can come over here and start to dominate um, like Luca, because they don't have to play above the rim and they don't have to pow have the power and strength required with the skill set. Their bigs are not like our bigs. So we, they're trying to eliminate our big men and take them out the game and make it a perimeter game. Make it a game on the floor where everyone, it's an even lane playing field that way. We'll still always be more talented than them, though, but now they can have, they can compete more and there'll be points where they can dominate like Luca. Because now your um, your mental capacity plays more of a role because your athleticism can't make up for a mistake. Anyway, so D'Antoni loves his system. And so Carmelo Anthony wasn't the type of player that D'Antoni um, really envisioned in running his system around. And at the time, the Knicks fans weren't aware of that truly. Everyone made it seem like Carmelo Anthony was this um, complicated player complicated person when the coach chose his system over the player and hence we were introduced to insanity where we had a player who um, exhibited great skills and had a great two-week run insanity lasted two weeks and y'all had the nerve to disrespect to this day all the achievements that Carmelo Anthony had prior to those two weeks his NCAA championships one, excuse me, but MV, you know, MOP, most outstanding player, coming to the NBA, carrying the Nuggets, even when he wasn't given the same privileges as and opportunities as LeBron James when LeBron was put on Cleveland when he got drafted. Carmelo had to play behind other superstars and learn to respect and come up behind them. He wasn't given the keys to the car initially. He's actually never been given the keys to the car. Not the way that some other players have. But still, he managed to shine and rise above all of that. And stand out. And be able to compete. And show us that he was as good as Kobe and LeBron. We had our several. We had our, he was an elite tier player. Then he came to the Knicks. And elevated even more. Led the league in scoring even with his coach working against him. Well, not true because at this time, at that point, we finally got rid of Andy and Tony. But by then, his reputation was already, already, how do you say it? There was already a stain on it because of what transpired. And we know how New York is. New York is very funny. New York fans are very fickle. 
And so people chose sides. There were people that was on, um, they were on D'Antoni's side because they wanted to see insanity. And let's 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 be honest, it had a lot to do with race, because New York can be very racial. Yes, it can be. The quiet is kept. New York is probably one of the most racial places on the low. But people also will call it out and deal with it. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of times, there's a lot of motives that, that, especially in sports, if you follow the Yankees, you know what I'm talking about. It shows a lot more in baseball than it will in, in most sports. But in this case, we can't be mad or, and I'm not offended at all. I'm just being honest. When I say that, the Asians were very happy to have a player that was showing dominant skills in the NBA. This is not anything new. This is why we go through what we went through and we're going through what we go through with the transition of our game being watered down for the European player to play and be dominant. So Jeremy Lin stepping up and being dominant and showing that he could um, play up to a certain level in the NBA amongst all those other players from wherever we're from. Let's just put it that way. It, it, it inspired a lot of people and they wanted to see more of it. They wanted to be down. Yeah, come on, people. There's a lot of Asians that live in New York, and they support the Knicks, and they love the Knicks, too. And I get that, and I respect that, and I don't have a beef with that. But D'Antoni tried to use that. He did use that to undermine Carmelo's position in New York. Instead of incorporating the system with Carmelo and incorporating insanity, he made it, we had to pick or choose one or the other, and that was wrong. It wasn't the right decision, and so it failed. The only thing that happened that was positive was that Jeremy Lin ended up with a nice career, and he ended up winning a championship. I have no issues with Jeremy Lin, and I don't think Carmelo does either, because this was really more about Mike D'Antoni and his love for his system, which keeps failing him. So they got rid of his stinking behind his stinking system, which didn't work in Phoenix, but because of the system and the way it's designed. Steve Nash was given two MVPs that I feel, especially back-to-back, -back, are questionable when you have LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and uh, several other players um, in the NBA that were um, qualified to win the MVP at the time. But it was also the same years that they decided to train change the criteria of what the MVP really is. Now it's questionable. What is the MVP? is not necessarily the best player in the league now. Now it's about what you mean to your team and all these other dynamics that never, ever existed. Now we have a, a argument if there should there be two awards. Should there be an MVP and an MOP so that way we can distinguish who's actually the best player in the league and who is a valuable player for other reasons in the league to his team or whatever definition they will come up with to justify what they did back then all the way till now, which is alter the purity of the game, which I love. I'm a traditionalist, so I notice when you do little things that aren't regular. I'm, you know, we're creatures of habit, and I'm com I get comfortable with stuff. So when you change things, I notice. We all do. Some of us is cool. I'm cool with change, don't get me wrong, but the way the NBA is doing it, the way that Mike D'Antoni was trying to do it, and what they tried to do to Mike, to Carmelo Anthony was trash. Now, D'Antoni went on to the Rockets. And Carmelo Anthony now is left with a stigma. Because as the Knicks organization started to fail in them, why? Because they hired Phil Jackson, another person who would be an adversary to Carmelo Anthony because they were in love with their system and not trying to utilize the superstar who was leading the league in scoring and he, they did not surround him with pieces like they show when you put Jason Kidd, Rasheed Wallace, and all of those other players, we actually made it to the playoffs. Had they continued to build around Car Carmelo, who was an elite tier player at the time, clearly we would have witnessed and experienced way more success than what we did. But no, we decided to go away from that. So what happened? We got lucky and we drafted Porzingis. We drafted Frank too. So we got lucky because Porzingis panned out. We don't know what Phil Jackson was planning because the fans got tired of seeing the nonsense that was transpiring and how. You could clearly see they were working against Carmelo. There were too many of us that got tired of what was happening while he was here. We didn't want to lose him. 
Because you already disrespected him with insanity, Mike D'Antoni's system, and now here's Phil Jackson undermining him again. So there was a lot of us fighting for Carmelo. And our voices got heard. And Phil Jackson ended up leaving. But what a lot of people don't realize is Porzingis and Carmelo were tight. Carmelo Anthony was Porzingis' favorite player. And the Knicks didn't treat Carmelo right while he was here. Phil Jackson treated Carmelo really bad. And we know this. Porzingis knew this. And he didn't like it. And then the president, the, the owner of the team, allowing it. It was tainted now, the relationship between Porzingis and the Knicks. Because guess what? He wanted to play with Melo. He thought him and Melo was going to win a chip together. But what did the Knicks do? Divide as usual. Eat our, our, we, we eat our own. That's what we do. That's going to be the motto that I borrow from, um, I forgot the, the, the gentleman's name, uh, the, the Hebrew remnant. Shout out to you during my video. That's the only shout I'm giving because there's two things that I already mentioned that I got from watching, which was true. And one of them was us eating our young. The other was the information that verified from and made me go check to see about the relationship between Carmelo Anthony and Porzingis. And the Hebrew Rembrandt was right. Carmelo and Porzingis were very close, come to find out. And Porzingis was pissed, come to find out. And he envisioned him and Melo winning the chip together. That's where a lot of that swag come from, because... Pazingas is tight with Melo. But, the, of course, the media would not show that dynamic because they wanted to create chaos. The media has an issue with our owner. Hence, we have issues with the team and the media as well. So now they're not going to show any positive vibes that don't go with whatever motives they have for our team. Because the media is enjoying the Knicks being horrible because they get to slay. And it's something for them to write about all the time when they have nothing else to talk about they can always talk about the sad state of the Knicks to go along with other teams in New York that continue to struggle now they compare the Knicks which is supposed to be a top tier organization the most valuable sports organization probably it's I, I know our value is high probably the highest in the NBA not to mention comparing to other sports our franchise is really really valuable so, these reporters enjoy that. It makes James Dolan look bad because he has something so precious and doesn't know what to do with it. So, that's the game that they want to continue to play. And Carmelo got caught up in that. And a lot of you fans get caught up in that. And y'all started to add fuel to that fire and start finding things to pick and choose wrong about him in such an ungrateful fashion. A lot of y'all now miss him. Y'all know y'all didn't want him to leave. And you won't admit it because you don't want to be, you don't want to have to argue and explain yourself to others who have this stupid uh, perception that Carmelo, we gave up the farm for Carmelo. He was, blah, blah, blah. they got all these negative things to say with no facts really to back that up. It's not true. It's a fake perspective. It's just empty words that people use that really are not true. Because look at us now. We are nowhere near where we were when we had Carmelo. We are looking for a player to be like Carmelo. We are hoping RJ or Mitch Robinson is anywhere near what Carmelo and KP could have been had Phil Jackson not started poisoning that situation and Mike D'Antoni. And you fans fell for it. Got that? Y'all fell for it. Paul Zingas ain't leave, didn't leave the Knicks because he was a prima donna. Pozingas left the Knicks because he didn't appreciate the way they treated Carmelo. And he didn't want to go through that either. He wanted to be out. It was whack what they was doing. They ain't have nothing for him to do. Now, nobody to play with. Then you want to try to use him as a bargaining chip. You had to get rid of him to try to get Kyrie and KD to make up for the mistakes that was made handling Carmelo. Crazy. And now look where we at. And I say all of that to say is, look at Carmelo now. You tried to destroy him. He gets sent to OKC. We clearly saw that Russell Westbrook and Paul George are garbage. And y'all sent Carmelo there, and when he got there, y'all blamed him for everything. Y'all blamed him for everything. And now, look, you can see clearly it wasn't him. Paul George ain't shit in the playoffs. Russell Westbrook ain't shit in the playoffs. 
They stat patterns. Carmelo's about results, and it didn't work. And it wasn't because of Carmelo. Look at what just happened with the Clippers, and look at what happened with the Rockets. And that's why D'Antoni's ass is out of a job, too, because his system is trash. He was lucky he had Chris Paul. Because he's doing the same thing with James Harden that he did with Steve Nash. Riding that guard, letting him do whatever. And you'll win games that way if you have the talented player. And you'll make the playoffs that way if you have a talented player that you can run that system behind. But you're not winning a chip, buddy. That's why you tried to get the job at Philly. And you better thank God, Joel Embiid, that he didn't get that job that they hired Doc Rivers. Because D'Antoni would have did the same thing to you that he did to Carmelo. And he's done to other players. Look at Capella. Capella was on his way to being a star in the NBA. Capella was doing good with the Rockets. Hey, look what he did. You got Mike James playing goddamn center or whatever fam's name is. Come on, man. Dead wrong, man. For a system, fam. This, 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 this era of, um, what is this? The, uh, the stats that they like to do. What is it? Where is it getting us? I tell you where it's getting us. A wacker ass brand of basketball from what we used to. We not seeing high flyers and, and, and certain skill sets that I used to see growing up. Now, when people play ball, and we not seeing traditional big man be able to do certain things and have certain moves now, because it's a soft game. And everything is about hezzies and euro steps, avoiding contact, shooting threes. I like Dominique Wilkins. That was my favorite player because he'll dunk on your whole five. There's nobody like that now besides LeBron and the old school generation of players that got that in them. That don't exist no more. It's sad, man, what they're doing to the game. And it has a lot to do with people like Mike D'Antoni. So I'm glad Doc Rivers got that job instead of him. I hope he goes to Indiana where ain't nobody going to go to play for him there because they don't got no money. So he could get him a guard like Olin Depot, beg him to stay, make the playoffs every year and get bumped. And Carmelo could laugh because you know what? After he went there and went to the Rockets, and, and I don't know why he went to the Rockets, D'Antoni showed the true colors because he did Carmelo even worse. He got him back really bad, man. It was really, that was so sad. Ten games. You knew what you was doing when you got that man when y'all signed him. How could he not fit after ten games? There he was, used as a scapegoat again. But guess what? Who's laughing now? Look at Melo on the Blazers. Guess what? Melo's a free agent. Watch Melo continue to play. A championship contender is going to want him to be a part of their team. Ain't nobody that's winning the championship going to be wanting to deal with Mike D'Antoni and his whack-ass system. Philly, Philly, word, shout out to Philadelphia and the 76 and shout out to AI, word, I love what y'all did, that made my day and I had to make this video, cause y'all fake ass Nick fans, y'all better stop talking about Melo like y'all crazy, and y'all fake ass Melo lovers cause a lot of y'all love him and don't wanna even hold it down, I wish he come back right now, we could use him right now, the only reason why I don't want him is cause I want him to get a chip. And I think a lot of us that love God, that love Melo and appreciate him, that's how we feel. We know we need him right now. We don't want to admit that we still can put this team right now where we have. We have Melo, man. We could really use him right now. But y'all don't want to admit it because you want to be politically correct. You don't want to have to defend your position. Y'all soft. You soft just like D'Antoni and his whack-ass system. And it's crazy because... Melo don't deserve that. He came here and he bust his ass. He loved New York. He gave up a lot to come here. And he dealt with a lot while he was here. And you know what? If he could, I bet you he'd come back right now. Because he loves it here. So you know what y'all need to do? Y'all need to show that man some love and some respect, man. And all your fake-ass Carmelo fans and fake-ass Nick fans need to be ashamed of yourself. You need to, you need to straighten that shit out and apologize. Smack them cobwebs out your brain. For even believing all that bull crap about this guy. The last good player that we've had. Y'all crying about a point guard. Shit. He was the last star player that actually ever wanted to be here. Says Patrick Ewing. You know how many stars and players used the Knicks as a bargaining chip and never come? 
I just have to explain that to um a few people that I've been writing back on my chat about. This fact that we constantly getting used as a bargaining chip. And then the people that we that put our name in their mouth, they never come here. So what's the point? The point is people use us because it helps them. It gives them leverage because we a threat. We official. We the Knicks. We New York. And Carmelo understood that. So shout out to you, Carmelo. I'm laughing with you, fam. Word. Like I said, this bus for you. And let's laugh at Mike D'Antoni. Yo, and yo, reach out to Lynn, man. I don't know, man. I don't know if he's doing good or not, but I know Melo didn't have beef with him, man. And yo, shout out to Porzingis, too, because you know what? He gets a bad rap from us. And I was mad at him because I didn't understand the dynamics of the situation. But after studying and finding out what's going on, at the end of the day, Porzingis, Porzingis loved being a Nick. He just didn't like what he saw, and he didn't want to get done dirty. So he wanted to go somewhere where they was going to treat him right. Because if they was going to treat Carmelo like that, as great as he was, what was they going to do to him? And I respect that. So on that note, I don't have beef with Porzingis anymore. I'm going to call the truth on that. I still want to beat Dallas every time we play them. And I want Dennis Smith Jr. to get better. But I don't have beef with Porzingis. I don't think Melo does either. They probably was boys the whole time. And we didn't even know that because, of course, the media doesn't um, inform us about stories like that. That's not what matters to them. That's not what sells papers and make and gets clicked. They like that clickbait. So on that note, once again, Dan and Tony, in the words of Big Pun, I'm laughing at you now. <laughs> yo, peace, yo. Carmelo, what?